<laughs> you, know, you know, it's interesting. So, like, the angels, there's different types of angels. I've talked about this in videos before, but, like, there's different types of angels as explained in the Bible, but we're never given clarification as to, like, can is this different forms angels can take, or do they always exist as this one kind of thing? Who knows, right? But Which there are the different forms they take. Of it. And the, the way I see it is that God always knew what was needed for the scenario. When an angel comes to speak to Gideon to tell him he needs to lead an army, he comes to this young boy as a man, appearing as a human, telling him, I'm. several times in the Bible, they have to tell people they're angels. They yep. appear and they say, oh, I'm an angel because it's not readily apparent. They appear as the form of a man. So sometimes it's that, and sometimes Other like- Other times you get the be not afraid. Sometimes, like in the book of Ezekiel, when he has the visions as he describes wheels upon wheels of fire with eyes, and the noise they made sounded as thunder and rumbling mountains. Sometimes it's like that. Whatever the scenario is needed is what appears. So is this the forms angels can take or these different kind? Who knows? But what's fascinating about that- well, It's also, you're like, hey, Jesus, what's up? I'm just trying to talk to you. Hey, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> what? No, I got you. Know, calm down, bro. I'm just an angel. Just floating here. Got my angel wings. Got my eyes. <laughs> I, I can't remember. Chilling out. <laughs> I can't remember what it was. It, it, it might have been no, supernatural. That got you. <laughs> <laughs> that got <laughs> it, it might have been supernatural or something, but it was like, there's a reason. The, the first thing we ever say is, be not afraid. Yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah. no, you're fucking terrified. <laughs> Why'd you sound like Castile when you said that? Dean, I found a liquor store and I drank it. <laughs> go, go on. I don't, I, don't, I don't believe the babysitter loves the pizza man. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to sit here to hear like a Wendigoon episode. Like, what's fascinating about that? <laughs> 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 I'm getting a live episode right now. Cody's like, shut up. <laughs> I know I'm interested in this. What's fascinating about that, Cody, <laughs> is that <laughs> in uh, the Bible, so it's like God always knew the tool that was needed for the job, right? Sometimes a show of power, sometimes a show of love, stuff like that, right? Sometimes somewhere in between, like the yeah, like the heavenly host, like a series of angels singing angelic, both powerful but comforting, stuff like that, right? What's fascinating about that is if the angels can take on these forms, if they have these, and if the way that Lucifer exists is he decided to rival God and was cast out of hell, and it says a third of the angels fell with him, then what do they look like? What forms can they take on? Are they no longer connected to the divinity of God? They no longer have unlimited dominion as described by the prophets, but they do have some power. Like I said, Pharaoh's sorcerers could perform miracles and they got those abilities from somewhere. So what does this bastardized, broken piece of divinity look like when it wants to put power over people? Could sometimes they appear as people? Yeah. Could sometimes they appear as something a little less or a little different than people? Yeah. And in my mind, that's- well, they were jealous of human. They were jealous of us. Like yes. mortality yeah. as a whole. What, and were it, they jealous of our well, look? Was it, was or it demons or was it like, uh, was it <clears throat> Satan himself was jealous of humanity? Well, so so uh, to, to finish that thought real quick, I uh, like maybe a lot of these stories we have, like I said, the monster in the closet, maybe a lot of that comes from them, what they used to look like, what they used to behave. Now, the thing around like the jealousy of the devil and stuff like that, a lot of that isn't expressly biblical. A lot of that comes from scholars, beliefs yeah, that yeah, came yeah. afterwards. The Catholic Church has its own like iconography and lore based around like the early saints and the early popes and stuff like that. But I'm not Catholic and I don't really to ascribe to a lot of their beliefs. Sure, some of the stuff they said I think was wise, but as, on a whole, I've got a lot of issues with it, which, duh. Um, but <laughs> I've expressed it. I've expressed it before on the channel. Not a big fan of the. I love the how you like so casually throw out a sentence that like Duh. would have gotten you fucking Duh. burned at the stake. Oh, I would have been executed oh, yeah. like 500 years ago. Yeah, easily he's for a several witch. things. Drowned him. Yeah, if he blows, he's a not. <laughs> Um, wow, do you remember how uh, Joan of Arc ended? <laughs> <laughs> that was yeah. super cool. Pretty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she was human. <laughs> oh. Oops. Oh. Yeah. Aww. yeah. If she, if they're dead, they're cool. Yeah, that's how it went most of the time. Um, but um, a lot of it comes from like not expressly Catholic, but people had stories after. So a lot of our modern characterization of uh, Lucifer comes from a lot of paganism that a lot of the time wasn't like expressly satanic, but in our hindsight, we've kind of ascribed it to be. Figures like Baphomet, for example, 
aren't expressly religious or satanic, but because it's like the image of the goat's head or whatnot and sacrifice, people like tie the two together in their memory. Lucifer, so, heard how many times is Lucifer mentioned in the Bible? His um, name, how much, how many times? I think it's just name? once. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Lucifer, yeah. Lucifer, One the morning. It's yeah. describing him as Lucifer, the morning star. Yeah. Because he was described time. as the most beautiful in all of heaven. Yeah. Most yeah. people don't even know that. It is one time Lucifer's name was yeah. said. Yeah, yeah. Actually, is, is, isn't, like, isn't Baphomet like barely biblical? Like, uh, is that like... no, actually, not biblical. So, Adam. like, okay. uh, yeah. if I if I recall, humans there's... are yeah. weird. We're like, look, have you ever heard of fucking demon goat Satan? Yeah. That yeah. One now, 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 now that being like, said, now. there is a lot of demons mentioned References. by name in the Bible. There's like, well, again, I'm kind of ascribing the belief a lot of these lesser gods or false gods were demons in effect. So. With that in mind, there's Baal, there's Dagon, there's uh, Moloch, stuff like that, which there's debate around if Moloch actually was real or not, but that's a whole nother topic. Um, God, I could listen to you. <laughs> I know, I was, I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, I'm, like keep like, going. The, the, I'm almost there. The, <laughs> no, 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 he's going to talk. And here, drop back, the tier. Back, back to thank you. Thank you, thanks, appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, C tier. Anyways. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Good old yes I'm tier. I'm going to move my way up, man. <laughs> Damn. I'll keep adding letters. We'll keep going. <laughs> You'll be Z tier. I'll make yeah, some up after that, yeah. We'll, um, All right, so G tier Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, with a lot of these stories uh, ar around, like, demonology and whatnot, a lot of it's subscribed by stuff that came after. So, like, people ascribe a lot of paganism to demonology. Like, the, one of the reasons Lucifer specifically is depicted as, like, the, or I guess I shouldn't say Lucifer, the devil is depicted as he is, is because of a lot of the stories around paganism and whatnot. So, like, the, the, as the devil is described in the Bible, which, for one, by the way, um, he's never called the devil in the Bible. Uh, the word demon is never used in the Bible. Uh, demon's a Greek word that came afterwards. It describes the fallen angels, which is what they're called. The word demons came later, comes off the word demos or all that. Um, and Lucifer is described as Satan, uh, which means the opponent. He's described as Lucifer. He's described as the accursed one, stuff like that. But he's never, like, the, the, the word for demons is devils or spirits or stuff like that, stuff along those lines. So the reason that now we see the devil is like the figure with like goat hooves and horns and all that stuff, it comes from a lot of paganism. Like there was a lot of early church beliefs, specifically Catholic like beliefs within the church when they saw pagans worshiping like um, figures of Baphomet or making idols to him, they ascribed it to demonology and kind of the two kind of started to twist together or melt did together. That a lot. And that was, that's not even for the bad stuff. It is for the positive stuff, the, the Yule log, anything like that. Yeah. Like the burning, Christmas, things like that. It, it, it was from paganism and they adopted those for yeah. a more natural progression for, hey, we are adopting Christianity. We are adop adopting cat. Catholicism. Hey, how do we do that? This is the gr the easiest way. Yeah, is yeah. Using what they're already known, or uh, what these people or these little areas are known for, we're going to adapt that into our own ideologies and then let that flourish. Yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a lot of combination melding stuff like that. It wasn't always like expressly evil. As a matter of fact, most of it wasn't even intentional. It was just like the the, the figureheads that were seen. And like I explained earlier, with a lot of the Old Testament imagery being of if these. False gods could be considered demons. What's considering a lot of them involve child sacrifice. I'm kind of cool with saying, yeah, probably. Um, <laughs> so, like, you have all these, you have these false gods. It that was can... widely regarded as a bad move. <laughs> <laughs> like, you have all these false gods that uh, can perform miracles and demand, like, blood sacrifices. So people assume those to be demons. Those took on the form of animal. Dagon was a sort of fish. Baal was a sort of ox. So, in a way, it's almost kind of serendipitous of the eventual <laughs> symbol of the devil was that of like the goat's head with the horns yep. and stuff like that it's kind of like history correcting itself down the line years later but a lot of our descriptions of like what you said like he he was jealous he wanted that that comes from a lot of early members of the church and stories they told so for the big one the one that's had the biggest impact on the devil in modern cult other than like paganism making the goat head imagery and all that other than that one of the biggest symbols um that changed how we view Lucifer was uh, Paradise Lost, which was written by John Milton, which my, I made a whole video going into that spiel or whatever. But we Milton's right theory. Here, but G here, right <laughs> over <laughs> Brandon's face. Over G, you. G tier. <laughs> oh, fuck, fuck you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we skipped a lot there. Brings me into my one of my biggest questions. What is the difference between like the Bible Lucifer, Bible devil, 
versus what people picture the, the devil to be now. So, um, Horns in the Bible, <laughs> the devil. Well, yeah, I mean, well, you know, you yeah, think of the devil, yeah. and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. you know, but like between like what the Bible actually says and what biblically people versus think now. actual. So, in the Bible, uh, when the devil is mentioned, when he's discussed, it is the opponent, right? Which is the best way to describe it. Uh, one of the verses, I believe it was Paul who described him as uh, the prince of the air, talking about that he has dominion over this world. This world is sin tainted, and therefore he has control over it. Uh, which is the reason we experience death, problems, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Same. Yeah, yeah. World not perfect all the time. You get that. Um, so the devil is responsible for those things in that he introduced sin to the world, but it was our choice to partake in sin. It was not forced upon us. We accepted it. By free will, we chose to bite of the apple. We chose to enact our free will in both good and bad ways. So the devil's objective in the world is not to be a scary face you see in the dark at night. It's not to be a predator that uh, gets you killed as quick as he can to just like slaughtering people or whatnot. Is that an end effect of it? Sure. But really, the devil's objective is to just turn you away from God. Now, is the better way of doing that, being evil, being awful, or is it giving people what they need outside of him? So a lot of times, as it's shown in the Old Testament and New Testament, the devil isn't someone who just slaughters, kills randomly. He gives riches. You get, like I mentioned, Pharaoh, rich man who has all this magic, all these powers that was given to his sorcerers and whatnot. He gives them exactly what they need because as long as they don't need God, then he's one. That's what he has. The devil knows how the book ends. He knows the prophecies. He knows that according to the scriptures that one day he'll be defeated by the archangel Michael. Sin will be no more. It will all be over. So then but, why, why fight? Because he can take as many people with him as he can in that amount of time. Nick, think, he knows Nick. it's a losing battle, but he can make other people lose as well. Communism, Nick. That's <laughs> the Christ. new age. <laughs> oh, it's ta- well, it's taking a new form, too. Uh, Why are you, but, you're trying to upset me right now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I wanted Don't to get you the- heated <laughs> so you, that it, it's relatable. Because <laughs> it's taking a new form. It's the exact same thing. It's like, how do I... I'm uh, mad. As many people I'm as mad at yeah, how much yeah. sense that made. Actually, <laughs> so I'm so upset. so what, what? Basically, like the modern depiction of the devil is as like I mean, you could call it a cryptid almost, right? Something violent, something that wants to kill you, run the your car off the road, stuff like <laughs> Title that. Title of the episode. Yeah, the devil's a cryptid. Yeah. There you are, standing in a bread line. <laughs> <laughs> You lo- you live in a country that doesn't like vowels. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> that got like seven layers deeper than you needed to. <laughs> Poland, <laughs> Hungary. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Jesus no, no, that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> Look what you've done, Eli. <laughs> you derailed everything. Yeah, we finally got back on track. Okay, back on track. No, but, I was learning. You fucked it up. I, now, we're, now we're here. I, I mean, I, I was, I was at the end of that tangent anyway. Ba- basically, the the main difference is that the devil's goal is not to be evil. It's that to be a provider, just one that is away from God, something to point you in a different direction. The Antichrist, for example, as mentioned in Revelation, is not a figure. I mean, by cause and effect he is, but he's not a figure that directly brings death or chaos into the world. It says in the end times, he's the one who unites the world. He's a leader that the people love and will do whatever he says. He's not expressly evil. He's just a different direction than that of returning to the creator, than that of salvation. Because ultimately, like if you look across the entire Bible, really the whole of Christianity, the point is that we were made to be companions with God. In the Garden of Eden, God walked and talked with us every day. We were, we were his friends. He wanted us. He gave us free will because to have that companionship, to have that closeness. And we chose to separate ourselves from that. So then rather than being cast out from other, rather than God smiting us and starting over, he says, all right, you get a second chance. You have this life. You can do whatever you want with it. And throughout your life, you can choose to turn away from me or turn back towards me. And if at the end of your life you've chosen to turn back towards me, then we'll be together again. The reunion of the spirit, the reunion in the air. It's in that way, death to a Christian is not like something to be feared. Of course, it's something to mourn. We miss loved ones. But in actuality, it's a return to what we were meant for. That's the beauty of it. So all Satan can do is make sure that doesn't happen to point us back the other direction. So that's effectively his goal in this life. He knows how the story ends. 
uh, he can just have a say in where we end up in that. Or really, he can give us the tools to give us the say. We still have the free will of choosing which way we go, either that be with God or with the opponent, so to speak.